Hi everyone, Simon here. I'm just going to show you a plugin for SolidWorks called Extract 3D. It's a reverse engineering application for allowing you to import mesh data into or scan data into a SolidWorks part. So I'm going to start by opening up a new part and um, I'm going to import some mesh data straight away. Okay, so we can see that we've got a casting. Um, I'll just take a moment or two to review some of the features and um, aspects of this part. Uh, you'll notice that it's got uh, three machined holes at this end of it. One of them is countersunk. And it's got a couple down here, again they're machined. I flip it over and we can see we've got uh, a couple of machined faces here and here. Uh, and two larger machined surfaces uh, at this end. Um, it's important to, to just check the part out because uh, we're going to orientate this to the coordinate system of the of the uh, part first of all. So at the moment if I press the uh, front view uh, um, control that's the view that you get. Um, we need to orientate this to the part coordinate system so I'm going to be using this face here and that one there uh, as one of the alignment uh, geometries. Uh, I'll probably uh, choose, I mean, looks like this part, yeah, it looks like this first surface here and that one should be perpendicular to one another. So we'll, although that's a cast face, we can use that as a um, a guide to uh, how we want to align the part. Uh, also, we've got these two machined holes here, which uh, I'll probably also use as part of the uh, creating a, an alignment. Uh, interestingly, on this one, you'll notice that the uh, these two uh, areas which are machining allowance um, and not concentric to the holes that are that are passing through them and that's because there's gonna there's there's been a, a misalignment of the pattern equipment or rather the sand taken from the pattern equipment when these two sands were put together uh, this feature would have been on a different piece of pattern equipment to everything else so that big flat face would have been the parting face um, everything below that face would have been on one bit of pattern equipment. Everything above it, which is just these two uh, circular bosses, they would have been on the other piece. And when the two bits of sand have gone together, they've not aligned. Clearly, this is something we'll correct in the reverse engineering process. Um, so, okay, so let's make a start. Let's um, pick off a plane to go onto this face. So we'll pick off these points here. Okay, that's going to be fine. Click OK to that. Um, I'm now going to um, create a section through the mesh data, and you can see that's just um, a really nice tight fit onto that surface, but we want to move it a little bit inboard of, of there so that we've got a cleaner strike across the, the uh, scan data. I'm going to stick a line onto, actually, so I just need to start a sketch on that plane. Uh, I'm going to take a, a line um, onto here, like that, and just drag it to there and then just snap it in place. And just a few normal to, just need to get a bit closer, that's it, and then snap it in place. Um, and then I'm going to um, select that line and this plane and just using ordinary SOLIDWORKS tools I'm going to put a plane at 90 degrees to that. Um, and finally I'm going to, I want to find out where these two holes are. So if I, if I close this section, create a new section here, we'll see we're going to cut through these two holes here. Uh, we will uh, just Going to view, I'll just go perpendicular to that view. We'll draw a couple of circles. Sorry, I need to just select that plane and edit sketch. Draw a couple of circles here and here. And we'll do a fit operation on those. So those are snapped onto the center of that um, hole there. Um, for curiosity's sake, well, I just want to find out what the center distance of that hole is from this machine face at the bottom. Um, got 100.16 on that one. And on this one we've got 
that's pretty much it's going to be. I'm going to round these. I'm going to rationalise these to um, 100 millimeters for this and 40 for that, um, which is going to be a better representation than simply copying what we have. You have to remember that whenever you have a part, it's always going to be imperfect. So you know, the manufacturing process um, that was used to make it will have a tolerance on it, and um, this part will have, would have obviously passed its um, sort of QA procedure, but that doesn't mean to say that the part you have is actually what you want to recreate. You want to create the, the nominal uh, data that uh, this part was designed to, in which case, like I say, in this scenario, we're going to have 100 for this, 40 for that. And there'll be other examples of as we're going through this uh, process of how we want to rationalize it. But the first thing we have to do is correct the parts coordinate system. So uh, we'll close that sketch. And I've got everything here I need to drop in a coordinate system um, so that I can then reorientate the mesh data. Uh, I'm going to want this part probably in that position. When I press the front plane, I want that to be the view that I see. So in that case, um, we want the origin to be there. The y-axis is going to be that way. Just invert that. x-axis is going to be this sketch here, and I'll just invert that, um, and the Z is towards me, so that's fine. Now I'm going to reorientate the part um, by selecting the mesh, um, use coordinate system, I'll select the coordinate system, which is there, and you see it pops out of position. Um, but now, if I press the front view on my space mouse, that is exactly how I wanted to be viewed, and you can see there the origin is there. In fact, if I just show these planes, um, you can see how they sort of strike through the center of those holes and they sit on the back machine face, which is perfectly aligned now. Uh, the rest of this, um, the rest of these features, I was using as construction geometry really, and we can we can just group select those and include in the the coordinate system, and they're gone, um, and that's how we line the data. Okay, so now we've got the data aligned. Um, before I actually start reverse engineering the part in terms of um, putting some geometry to it, I just want to have a quick look and um, make sure that there aren't uh, any kind of problems with it. One of the things that I've spotted on this part is I'm just viewing it from the from the front plane here, and I can see quite clearly that we have quite a reasonable amount of draft on this face here on the inside, and what appears to be virtually nothing on the outside, it seems to vary, like we've got a little bit there, like nothing here. Um, obviously at this point, it's sort of, that, that rib is, is pretty short, there's like virtually no length to it, but, but uh, um, over here we seem to have quite a bit on the inside and very little on the outside, and that's unusual. What I would expect typically from the casting process is I'd want to see a part which had got um, uh, one degree of draft on the inside and the outside, basically one degree minimum on, on all faces, that's a typical um, drafting allowance and it seems that we have a asymmetric draft on this part, so we're just going to have a quick look at that. Um, so I'm going to select the front plane, draw a sketch, I'll use my S key, select a line, I'm going to put a line through here, uh, sort of perpendicular to this uh, rib. Um, I'm now going to draw a uh, create, create a plane um, perpendicular to that and cut a section through. So we've got our section and I'm going to create a, a little sketch just so I can take some measurements. Um, yeah, so you can see here this profile um, it almost looks like it's vertical here um, and it almost seems to return on itself at this point. Um, and obviously down here it's dipping away. Now this is probably due to fettling of the casting, so that's sort of not too surprising. But certainly I wouldn't expect to see that form on there. Uh, like I say, I would expect to see a symmetrical draft either side. So let's just measure what we've got here. So I'm going to just draw a line onto that. Again, I'm, I'm drawing it slightly off vertical because I don't want it to snap on vertical and I've got automatic relations turned on. So I'm going to just draw it and then snap it into place. Um, 
And yeah, it does seem to have uh, a little bit of draft on that face, but it's definitely, if I just um, lock that in place, it's definitely deviating outside. I mean, this is a um, an unmakeable feature. You could not, uh, if you made that just like that, if you copied it exactly as it was, you can't make that. So this is a, an error that's occurred in the, the process somewhere. Um, the pattern equipment wouldn't have been made like this. So somewhere in between the pattern equipment being made and the metal solidifying, we've got what appears to be an undercut in that casting. Now, typically um, when they're working in a foundry, I mean, foundrymen are very highly, well, they're highly skilled people who will make almost anything work. But uh, in order to do that, sometimes with a, a piece of pattern equipment, if the casting has got sort of minimal draft on, say a one degree draft, they might have to wrap the the pattern on the side, you know, give it a few back splashes with a hammer basically to make the um, pattern uh, release from the sand. The sand is, is poured onto the pattern equipment and then um, it, it cures, it goes hard. So that the sand is obviously, uh, it's, it, it's got like a resonance, I think, and, and, and it cures. Uh, and goes quite hard, which is why you can use it as a as a tool to pour metal into. But um, in order to get it out, you have to have draft. If you've got minimal draft like this, uh, it can get pretty stuck in there. So sometimes they wrap the patterns on the on the side. And when you wrap a pattern, then you're going to create um, movement, which is what it's doing. It creates a, a slightly larger space for the sand to sit in, and hence release the casting. Um, that of course is reflected in our finished shape. Um, let's just measure that. So we've got 0.35, which obviously is not enough um, on this to to do the job. So I, if I'm going to reverse engineer this in a way that is meaningful to someone that I might give the data to, I need to correct that. There's no point in me giving them um, a casting with 0.35 degrees of draft on. If I just copy what we've got. Um, well, worst case scenario is I create them an undercut, but if I just copy what they've got, it still has draft and not enough to do the job. Um, let's have a look and see what the draft on the other side is. I suspect it's probably more than one degree um, if this one is 0.35. Um, okay, let's just snap that to position and take a quick measurement from here to here. There you go, nearly two degrees on that side. So I think what's happened is this uh, rib is actually slightly pushed outward which is why we've got virtually nothing on the outside and two degrees on the inside and two degrees is not a bad draft to have on a casting but I think probably um, this draft should be shared between the two sides so we'd really go for for one degree on the inside one degree on the, the outside the other thing that can happen is that if you think about the the way this part is formed uh, obviously you have a um, a cavity, the shape of this sand. So you've got sand on the outside of this and you've also got sand on the inside of this shape. And you're pouring liquid metal into it, which at some point is solidifying when it gets cool enough. But the sand is quite rigid. I mean, when you the, when you take the, the sand off the pattern, it's actually quite hard. Um, and the, the, the metal is going to contract onto that lump of hardened sand that can affect the way it contracts as well. So it could be this is partly formed by wrapping the pattern uh, to get the, the pattern equipment off the sand and partly just because you've got this block of sand inside which is kind of trying to stop the metal sort of contracting onto it. So maybe that's also had an influence on the, the final geometry. Either way, it makes sense, I think, to correct it and um, apply a one degree draft. Um, I'm also going to check uh, actually, we'll check, just check the uh, the wall thickness at the bottom. I would expect in the casting this size for it to be uh, five or six millimeters. So it's just, in fact, it's just uh, it's it's not flat. You can see actually the it's it's deviating. Uh, it sort of touches down over here and over here, but the in the center it's deviating. It's sort of it's panelled out a bit. Um, Again, not not unusual, but we we notice when we cut a section through the, through the bottom face that uh, it wasn't flat. But that's probably a, a reasonable average. So let's just see what we get if we measure between there and there. Okay, so we've got about five millimeters 
uh, wall section. I'd say that's pretty, yeah, I'd expect to see that. I'm happy to, to put a five millimeter uh, kind of plate thickness at the bottom. Um, we could have a little look and see what we're getting across the bottom here. Okay, it's not a great measurement, but okay, six and a half, seven millimeters. Well, we'll model it, we'll model it up and see what it looks like. Um, again, because it's got this deviation, we we know that when we model it up, it won't fit the mesh. It'll be a good representation, but to to do this job justice, we won't actually have an exact fit in the mesh because if we did that, we're going to create a part that we can't make and you'd have to go through a reverse engineering exercise to correct it which obviously is a waste of time so we should model it right from the start okay so let's um let's get rid of that one and that one and take that section off i, I suppose i could just um reorientate this and stick it over here um that'll do yeah, this seems really quite pronounced over here, but that's probably just because it's a taller uh, wall section. So we'll um, create our plane again, perpendicular, cut the sections through, and start to sketch and see what we've got. Yeah, it's really quite obvious on this one. Um, so we'll, again, we'll just put our line clearly, not vertical and we'll just grab both of those snap them onto the geometry I'm going to put a center line down through here so I can just conveniently draw a dimension to it so we've got 1.15 actually that's pretty you know what I'd expect actually um, this one's 0.42 I'd say that's a little bit under um, again I think it makes sense to uh, squared up it's probably uh, perhaps again this issue of the either the sand um, kind of holding it out a little bit as it's solidified and, and maybe sort of wrapping the pattern to get the, the pattern equipment off the sand you know the, I can see how we, we should really have a one degree on the outside and a one degree on the inside okay so let's delete those geometries and think about extracting this profile. Now I'm going to probably pick up the profile at about you know, just a few millimeters above the bottom plane just because of the, you saw how the fettling had just um, rounded the bottom edge of this bit certainly where I took the section through. So let's um, create a section through there. That's say three millimeters, just over three millimeters up the wall. Now, of course we have got, we will have lost a little bit of the of the theoretical draft, um, even though it didn't actually exist because it had been fettled off or, and, and perhaps due to distortions of the casting. So we're gonna put something in based on what we have and then possibly, um, you know, put some dimensions on and then correct it afterwards. So I'm gonna go round and place the geometry. I, I use single pick per command in SOLIDWORKS. I, I prefer it. Um, it's not quite... Um, you know, there are advantages and disadvantages. Uh, on the whole, I, I prefer it as a method, but the um, downside is you have to keep on selecting the command when you want it, but if you have it on a hotkey like the S key, which is the standard SOLIDWORKS key, it's not so much of a big deal. Okay, so um, this actually I do want to be vertical, and I want that to be vertical because although they might the mesh might not actually be vertical, I think it should be, and we're going to correct it. Um, I'm going to put a a circle on there, and that's actually stuck onto my plane, um, and that plane coincides with the origin, and um, it's where I define the part to be orientated around, so that's that's fine. And I also measured this and decided I was going to make that 140 to correct it. Um, and I'm going to snap that onto 
So let's make that and that tangential. Um, I'll put a dimension on that soon and see what that works out to. This one is slightly in board. Um, and so obviously just intersecting that slightly below there and then putting a fillet in. So that's okay, we can do that. I'll just say don't show me that again. So I've got my uh, trim tool set up the way I want. Um, let's drag a box around those three. Let's just see. Will that bring in from there? No, it won't. Let's just bring that a bit closer. And this one, I don't know what the tolerance of of when it, of how far out it will snap it back to, but um, I was obviously a little bit outside of it before, so that should be okay. No, that's not. Okay, that one's not snapping in for some reason. Let's uh, let's uh, do that one. There you go. That was a point snap rather than a line snap. We're not quite sure what that wasn't snapping on there. Maybe there's some um, issue with the mesh data in that area. But anyway, we've got it in position. I'm quite happy with it there. Again, it it is a little bit rough this casting. Um, it's quite typical for I think it's a cast iron part, so nothing unusual. But you just have to see how things fit, and it, it, it's not um, something you can be necessarily too precise about to start off with. It's sometimes a question of refinement and, and a little bit of tinkering to, to get a result that you're truly happy with. You have to be a bit of a detective and logic problem solver sometimes with these parts. Um, right, on this one, I'm going to make that arc. It probably should be concentric with this. It, doesn't look, it looks tighter than that. Um, well, let's just see what happens if I put a, a three-point arc on. Um, yeah, that's sort of well off center, really. It probably doesn't matter that much. I'll just leave that like that for now. And I'll make those two tangent, and I'm going to put, I'm going to take the this one, and I'm going to intersect it with that line, and then I'm going to fill it afterwards, possibly after I've extruded something. So. Let's just do a corner extend or intersection between those two um, and between those two. Um, I'll put radiuses in for these and I'll put a large radius in for that one. I can extend those two and um, uh, that probably should go in before the extrude. So I'll just do a, a quick three point arc to that. Let's snap that into place and I'm going to uh, make fixed for now just because when I wait, make these two tangent um, I'd rather it was the radius that floated rather than the line um, now I can again just trim these two together uh, and that's uh, it's such a a kind of messed up face this back one it probably doesn't matter too much which of these two is the one that leads and uh, which one follows. I, I think that's clearly in board, so that's not right. But somewhere like that, I mean, it, it does push us out on that radius. But then that's what happens with a with a casting. It's not a precise process like um, CNC machining. Um, then we'll trim these two together. Uh, this one. I'm going to, and I could use a SolidWorks radius tool. Um, it doesn't work, SolidWorks radius tool doesn't allow you to sort of drag the fillet, I don't think it does anyway. So um, for that reason, I'm going to instead do it like that and then snap it into position. Now we did have some fettling marks around here, so it doesn't surprise me that we've got this sort of deviation at this point. Um, Let's make those two tangent and tangent. And then I, having made them tangent, I can just corner trim them together. That should intersect perfectly there and there. Okay, so that fillet's coming down further than I had 
put my line in. So if I put my grab my line and anchor it, and I can just drag it down this way. And I'll intersect this line and that line. And I'll do a couple of more uh, radius fits on that geometry. So let's fit those and fit this one. And fit that one. And I'll make that and that tangent, that and that tangent, that was tangent, tangent. Okay, so I can stitch up, I can just do a corner trim to all of these now. Uh, I think that's that's it. I think that's that's the complete profile. Um, okay, having captured the profile of this main part of the casting, I'm going to handle this part of it at the end in a separate operation. I'm going to do a thin extrude because that way I get the outside wall and the inside wall at the same time with the one degree of draft on. Um, with that in mind, I'm going to put a radius in here because uh, if I don't, as this wall gets thicker, it will self intersect and uh, that will just cause me a problem. So I can avoid that by uh, probably something like an R10, I guess. That'll do for now anyway. Um, and the other thing I'd like to do is just quickly dimension it. Uh, because it means that I can, you know, because we have this sort of slightly uneven um, surface on the casting, it means I can extrude the feature up and then just tune it a little bit based on the finished um, drafted uh, geometry rather than having to go back into the sketch and just drag things around so it'll be quicker. I'll get a, if you like, a live preview. So I've got single pick per command, I'm, not, I'm going to just double click on the command so I can just rattle these off quickly so that's that one obviously it goes black when it's fully defined um, and but what I should also do is just take off the fixed restraint on that one and that one in case I need to move those as well which is perfectly possible um, let's just double click that there's not much to say really while I'm doing this it's Unfortunately, the auto feature tool and the auto um, constraint tool in SolidWorks won't really help us with this because it tends to only dimension the endpoints of geometry rather than um, the, um, the 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 lines and the angles, which is what I want to be able to constrain this because I put all the all the effort into getting the the angles correct. Um, so I know that I want to keep those pretty much parallel and this is a really good reason why um, that turns out to be not the case but I can't think what it would be at the moment. Okay just a couple more to do now so we've got that length there and we've got that radius that one it's a pretty quick job really but it's it's worth doing I mean, I don't have to do it but it's, it's I feel like it's worth doing at this stage just because it'll save me having to go back and edit it later if uh, if I need to change anything, which well, that's a pretty good chance I will, just because when we captured the, captured the section in the first place, it was based on a, a fairly rough cast finish. Um, right, so we're happy with that. We can now extrude it and do a thin feature extrude. Um, just select that profile. Uh, let's say thin feature. Yep, seven millimeters already. We'll change the direction to the inside. We don't want anything like that high. We'll come back down to, we'll terminate at the top of this feature. Now I can pick off a, a point um, in a 3D sketch from the Extract 3D tool set, Create Points, but I don't, I just don't need to for this. I can eye it up um, nicely. I put it, say, there. If I wasn't happy with that, then obviously I could go and do the the, uh, the point, but I am happy with that, so I forgot to apply the draft. So there's my one degree of draft. Do I need to change anything? Yeah, let's just tweak that out a little bit. 
Um, so that is controlled by this dimension here. Let's put that in, I don't know, 0 0.65. And we're changing it by very little here, but yeah, you can see how that face is just cutting through. We don't have any surface comparison tools at the moment, back to the mesh, it'd be like inspection tools, but they're being um, implemented at the moment. This is obviously just the beta version. Uh, I think I will just push it out to, say, 0.8. We're obviously well beyond cast tolerances here, so this is really me just illustrating that it's pretty easy to, to tweak geometries once you've created them. If you've modelled the uh, original geometry in a flexible manner, which is obviously in SOLIDWORKS is very easy to do. Uh, 35.9 say on that one. Yeah, that's fine. I'm expecting a good conformity at the bottom um, and less so at the top because we know that is underdrafted on that face there for the reasons I mentioned before. Um, at least that's my guess anyway. Um, we'll add a little bit to that face there, maybe make, make that 10.7. Okay. Uh, 10.7. I think I'm pretty happy with the conformity of that. Possibly square that up to five. Oops. Press the right button. Okay. I think that's good enough for, for, for this um, exercise. I'm now going to cut these, um, what are ribs, back to the correct geometry. And I'm going to do that in two stages. So I'm going to cut them both back with one cut to start off with, and then I'm going to replace face for the longer one. Doesn't matter which way round I do it. It just it strikes me as quite an efficient way to do it. So I'm going to select a. I'll drag that into position in a second. Let's just before I do that, I'm just going to turn off my solid and. Uh, I'll do, actually I might do the long one first and then trim back the shorter one. So, no, I'm not going to bother with a section on this one. Not because uh, I can't do it, it's just not worth it. Um, it would it would require an extra uh, feature because the section, I'd have to create a plane to, to do it and it just seems, uh, well why bother? Uh, this one Go to there, right? I can now dimension between here and here. Uh, maybe make that one five, maybe just slightly under when I, where I drew it. Um, I might as well dimension that for the reasons that I dimensioned the other one. Um, Use my S key. I have to get into the discipline of using the S key. I go through periods of remembering to use it and then forgetting to use it. Uh, and we can actually just cut that straight off, I think, straight through. There's no reason that we can't do that, is there? So let's show that and cut through. I want to flip the side to cut. And want to do both all. Okay, and now that is a separate feature, a separate um, surface. Uh, what I'm gonna, I have to break that surface actually because I don't want to, when I will replace this face, I don't want to drag it down past that face there. So what I'm going to do is just put a, a cut in here. I think just something like that. I can just cut that out the other other direction and. I can just make it a millimeter, I think. And now, when I take this down, uh, you'll probably still see that, won't I? Doesn't matter. Um, let's put the face in that I want first. So let's hide that body again so I can see my mesh. Uh, on the 
first sketch actually I can just um, I want to show that one so I can mate to it it's that one actually isn't it there we go then I can pick up on that point take it out to here and I can just dimension that angle this time I'm going to use the extruded surface command so I'll take that all the way across there like that and then I want to show my body again now is this going to work? let's see um, extrude face sorry replace face which is that one and replace that one with this one no okay so I think it's because my cut doesn't go far enough so let's just extend my cut downwards to there and hopefully that will work now uh, replace face, where we, there we go, replace face, so pick up that one, that one, there we go, and then I've just got to tidy up my little cheat from before, so I'm going to hide my mesh, right, so that's that, let's show the mesh again, um, this wall isn't quite sitting where I'd want and even if you allow for the fact that the the draft is a little bit wrong it still seems a bit too fat could be a casting error I would expect it to be a uniform wall everywhere really um, I think there it looks okay because we've got the mesh protruding that side and not this side I'm going to move that a little bit uh, because I can so what have we got in terms of radius there we've got a 3.6 millimeter radius that's at the bottom uh, about 2.56 I'm going to delete this for now because I want to move on to use the move face command which is this one I'm going to move that face back um, well how far probably maybe about 0.3 see what that looks like yeah, I'm happier with that because you can see it's it sort of uh, we had a, a good correlation at the bottom. It doesn't look so fat at the top. I think it's not right in terms of I think that ultimately there's sort of a mistake on the part here. But this exercise is partly to show you the features of, of um, Extract 3D and partly to reverse engineer the part. It's not a real. Uh, it doesn't need to be done. I'm just sort of demoing it really. But if we put a, a fillet back in there again and actually it looks more uniform than tapered um, so I think that's a happier fit than having a tapered fillet in that corner so I'm going to leave it like that I think it's a better result um, now I can deal with this end of it now the uh, what am I going to do with this I'm going to put a plane in the center of here so I'm going to pick off that midpoint and the front plane and I'm going to place a plane in the middle because I want to be able to refer to this face and that face and now I'm going to draw on that plane actually I'll just cut, cut my section uh, set the plane, cut section I picked the wrong plane Did I pick the wrong plane or did I? I did pick the wrong plane, yeah. I wanted that plane, but I don't want it quite in that position. I want it to, to be further back in, in the middle of that rib. So I want to drag it to here. There we go. Um, but I want to draw on that plane. So now we have this profile to, to put in. Now I've got. I've got a situation here where I need to work out what's happening with these holes. In fact, I'm going to move that still, that section is 
I want to be able to see what these holes are doing clearly. So let's move that section a little bit more uh, to there. That's better. Now I've got a clear view of these holes. Because they're going to influence the shape of the casting, I want there to be uniform wall thickness all the way around the top. That's what the design intent is suggesting. So I'm going to drop some circles on there and one on here. And uh, we'll fit those in place. That one is a bit too far out. Right, okay, and finally, now these two, I'm assuming they're vertically aligned, so let's quickly measure those. Yeah, I've got a, a delta y of, of um, okay, no, delta y is not something I need to look at, delta x uh, of 0.19, so I think they would be, should be vertical, then they don't measure that on the mesh, but I think they should be, so I would make them vertical. Uh, these look like they're going to be horizontal, so let's just quickly measure that. Uh, so that on the z-axis they are 60 microns different. So again, I think that is um, it's going to be correct to make those two horizontal. Let's just control them with some dimensions. So if I dimension from there to the um, origin plane, which is that one. Okay, I think that's probably going to be 70 millimeters. And uh, from, say, there to there is, well, I think that's probably 70 millimeters as well. Uh, well, it should be once I've corrected it. And from here to there, well, that's probably 24 millimeters. So from here to here, what does that measure? Okay, that's not that. I suppose it could be 63.5, maybe, or maybe it's a, um, maybe it's a, um, an inch dimension. So, yeah, that's yeah, it's probably two and a half inches, maybe. So, um, okay, well, let's just start by making that vertical. So sometimes I wouldn't expect it to be two and a half inches just because all of the other geometries have been metric or been near to a metric equivalent. So to, to have mixed units, maybe there's some sort of mounting bracket for a motor and uh, the motor comes from a manufacturer where historically they've had a two and a half inch mounting point. I don't know. It doesn't look like a motor mount, but you never know. Right. Um, let's make those two horizontal. Let's make that 24. Let's make that 70. Uh, things have moved very slightly out of position, but I think it, it just illustrates how very often there is a clear design intent and, and you need to kind of follow that if you can. If I was in a situation where I was doing this as a real job, I would ask the manufacturer or the, the person who asked for the job to be done, um, do you, can you tell me what that is mounting to so I can just check these dimensions and make sure they, they line up perfectly with what you want. In this case, I have to take it all from the mesh. Um, that's 11 point, sorry, 10.99, obviously, um, I'm going to make that 11. Um, we don't actually need, oops, not 10, 11. We don't need that geometry right now. But we're, we're going to take off this profile at the top. So let's drag that out to there. And, oops, I don't want a vertical relationship. I just want it to snap onto that, that's it. Uh, and I'm just going to quickly lock that in place so that it doesn't move while I make that and that tangent. And that's measuring, I'm going to make that 30. Okay, it's just over constrained because I'm going to leave it driving at the moment because I want to take that off. So now that's if I make that 30. Uh, and we'll put a center line down here just to make it a, a bit nicer to dimension to. 
for the for the draft. So I can see if I need to come back in and edit it, I can see that this dimension across here is going to be the draft. Okay, that's going to be one degree. Um, and we will mirror that across. So select that and that. In fact, I can get rid of the I can get rid of the mesh data. Don't need to see that. And I don't need. Well, I might as well keep the um, the CAD on there for, for for a second. The solid body. Let's mirror those across. And it's going to be easiest if I just drag those up like that. And I can corner trim this back to here, this one back to here. I think when I extended it, I lost my symmetrical relationship, so I'm just reinstating that. So that's now in the right position um, for me to. Um, extrude up to this surface. Actually, I've got my. I want to fill that in. I want to fill that in. I want to make it all solid at the moment. I don't want to have the separate sections. Um, and I don't want to. Obviously, don't want that one in there as well. Is that part of the extrude? So I've just picked up the profiles or the contours that I want. So I can go up to surface. And on the second one, up to surface. And we can merge the result. We're happy for that to, to merge now. So if we go back to a mesh and just see what we need to put on the still, not much to do now. And um, the base of it, uh, I can ex I can um, now put the base in. And for that, I'll just select uh, the loop and offset that by a millimeter and extrude that up by five millimeters. That's the base of the casting in there. Um, I can place these two bosses in here now, and then I'll do those two. So it's really taking shape now. There's not much to do. The, the hard part, if you if you like, if there was a hard part in this, was really just the uh, picking off the original profile, um, and we could take that straight from the mesh. So it's a pretty straightforward and simple process. We've hardly got any features in this uh, feature tree. Uh, this one I can pick off there. That will be fine to, to do that um, and that looks like they've got a straight line across there so but I'm drawing on this face yeah okay so I will not draw on that face I'm going to draw on the bottom face down there And then I will pick off this profile because I don't need to. Yeah, that's. Yeah, I don't. I don't need to to to, to pick it off the uh, the top face. I want to extrude it with a bit of draft on. Well, this is a bit messy, but. Let's just drag that to there. And I'll put a dimension between that face and that face, a point in that face. Um, so that will do. That will do that wall there. Now this wall, just tilt it to get rid of the draft, and I can take that across there like that. Now this one it has got a curved face in that area there. So we'll put that there and we'll draw another line up here and then we'll put that in there but we'll trim it back afterwards. We want to drag it to approximately that position. Now again it's going to be slightly off centre because that Area there is not concentric to the hole, and we've made it. We've made the hole. We've, we've datum that or reference that in our original geometry. So, right, I need to just trim back bits and pieces here. So let's 
make those two tangent and we'll get rid of that 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 and that and that will generate that face there and this one here um, just to control it I want to go back to my original sketch which is that one because I think have we got a reference to the hole there we haven't but we don't need one because we we know it's vertically beneath this one so it's going to be a vertical relationship and we also know it has a 40 millimeter center so we can place that on there that jumped a load didn't it And now I can put a dimension on there, uh, and that's that went out of position when I when I applied that dimension. So let's just drag that back into position and put a dimension onto that one. And I think that's good to go now. So I can just extrude that up to this surface with draft on it. It's got one degree on. That'll be fine. I might just take that back in a little bit, so I'll make that say eleven millimeters. Yeah, that's probably not far off when you consider this is an area where sand gets caught up in or, or gets pulled off. So I think that's just not a very clean surface, but in reality probably eleven is about right for that. Um, Twelve point two five. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Uh, let's make that the same. Twelve point two five. I can fill it to right at the very end. So I think that's that area completely done, apart from machining. Um, I've got two pads to go on the back. I don't know how deep they are. Uh, we can just put a point on the surface there and measure between the two. So 1.1 millimeters, probably supposed to be one, but um, yeah, this one is a little bit awkward because I didn't make this concentric here. Uh, but we do know that it's going to be concentric to this feature. So I'm going to show that sketch. I'm going to make that and that a coincident. So that's they share a center now. Um, this one is going to be a full diameter. I'm going to go all the way up to the edge on that so I can just pull off that edge there, uh, drag that radius round until it touches itself. And that's a full diameter. So probably these two should be the same. Let's just see what that looks like if I do make them the same. Equal. It is just kissing that. I suppose you'd expect that. Um, let's see what that looks like if I extrude it up. At 1.1 with draft on it. In reality, when when you were, if you're going to create a pattern of this, then I would add another three or four mm or three millimeters to it. So it would be a four millimeter um, offset, which would give me a three millimeter machining allowance. That's typically what I would do. So that's those two faces taken care of. Um, they don't even look like they're they're the same height, but they they clearly should be. Uh, and now we've got the back of this casting to do. Now from that, from this one, I can draw on this face here. I can pick off the geometry for that feature there, that feature there. So that profile, I can pull off. And in fact, I can just reuse it, can't I? Don't even need to do that. I can just reuse that sketch. So I don't even need to create a sketch, I just need to um, select that and create a boss extrude, selected contours, I want, I do need to show that sketch actually because I need to pick up the, pick off the relevant contours, um, so let's select that, select the contours, we want that one, that one 
and that one. I think that's going to work. And we want it to go up to surface, which is our front plane, or top plane rather. Uh, I need there we go. Get rid of that one, get rid of that one. That's it. Okay, so that's going to do that boss there. And then I've got one to do for this, which is just going to be a, a largely re rectangular block, but actually it's going to have a little bit of draft on the side walls. So we can use, um, in this case, I can work off the uh, top plane. Um, I'm going to place it either side equally of this hole here. So I'm going to start by sketching in a line which goes from top to bottom and just saying, oops, wrong button. Just saying, make this two coincident, and then draw a line down here, and dimension that to there. Well, let's put in 1.5. I'm not quite sure why it needs so much more draft than the other bit. Um, and uh, let's mirror it across and see how it looks like when I've mirrored it, because maybe. Yeah, it shouldn't be 1.5, it should be 1. And just drag it out to there. I think it's just where the light was bouncing off the, off the mesh there. And I can pick off that face and that face. And um, we can corner, we can corner trim these. Actually, let's just snap it onto there. That's what I need to do. Snap that onto there. And I can trim this back. So trim that off, trim that off, trim that off, and trim that off. Um, I should only need one dimension on this to fully define it. Uh, let's make it 31.5 and extrude it up to next plus extrude up to next that can combine okay i'm not unhappy with that i think that's okay it looks maybe a little bit shy on width i could it's not a truly symmetrical feature and i think it really should be but let's make that a seven five as a compromise We can put this feature in here, this um, fillet. So let's select that edge and put in a feature here. Um, which view do I want? I want that view there. Yeah, a bit of a lump here. I think that's probably more down to the uh, some sort of casting error. Um, it looks like it's going to be a 25. I think a 25 would be a good fit for that. Uh, and I've really just got two bosses to put in now. Um, so I've got this one and that one to put in. I'm going to draw them from... Well, yeah, uh, I suppose I could put a, a plane through this space here so I can shoot up the plane and then I get that draft. So let's do that. So we'll draw, we'll use the right hand plane and we'll cut a section through and move the section to, oops, move the section to there. There we go. Goes a bit lumpy bumpy that one. Okay, all right, well, uh, let's just drop a line on it and see what it looks like. Oops. I've got a, I dragged that plane out accidentally then, so let's just drag that way back in again. There we go. Even that is kind of crazy. Right. Uh, It does look like there is um, some kind of two-stage bit of geometry going on here. So it's possible that 
yeah it looks like they've about that face there they've changed the the draft so we'll we'll replicate that uh, we'll draw or shorten this to here and I'll just do a, a fit to that and then we'll draw another line from here to here fit that we can intersect those two then I'm going to anchor them actually now I'm going to control them with the dimension I might as well control them with the dimension uh, so we want to go from there to the origin and from there to the that plane to get the angle so you can see these these uh, do rationalize to sensible um, angles and I don't know just for sake of completion we should um, reinstate what those angles should be so I think that that should be one degree and that should be four degrees um, and I can just drag it up to there I can drag this down to here extrude a surface across here and that will take care of that geometry I'm going to hide that section I'm going to hide this surface and there we go hide that surface and now we can select this plane that we used before which goes to the center of this rib so that'll be fine the reason I'm using that is because if I draw on this face it's got draft on it so that won't give me what I want I need to draw on that face and cut a section again through the mesh it's a little bit difficult because that, that, that isn't a particularly great piece of mesh but actually one side of it is alright so maybe I can use just that bit yeah the one side of it's alright uh, we know it should be concentric, well I think it should be concentric to this circle here so we'll start by oops, just let my my plane for drawing on right um, we'll start by drawing a circle which is concentric to this and this that is quite nicely concentric and then we'll draw a line on here which is tangent take it down to here and then we'll create the vertical part of it to do it's going to be slightly off uh, funnily enough the other side actually on that part of it is better so maybe I'll use that instead and then mirror it across so let's just fit that into place stick a center line in mirror it into T and we can pick off that edge and then I can just intersect these into here that up to there, that up to there, trim those off, trim those off, um, then mirror across this line about that one. And I could pick off the inside of the casting for the other, um, for the base of it. And a box around that and take that out take that out right now if I want to dimension this up I mean it always takes longer if you dimension it you don't have to dimension it um, necessarily it's probably good practice if you want to be able to edit that part afterwards or give it to a client and say there you go and if you give them just a completely unconstrained model it doesn't look very good often have this dilemma about when when you're presenting data to other people whether you try to rationalize it on their behalf and there are some things you can and some things you can't uh, in this case there's been quite a few areas oops I've already got that dimension where I've been able to rationalize it 
um, I think I need to just reinstate this um, symmetrical relationship because I think when I extended the lines that disappeared so we'll do the same with that one. Symmetrical, right that's all done. I can now extrude that feature up to that surface there. So if I go up to surface, if I can select, it's going to want me to show it and then select it. Okay. And that's that one taken care of, so we can hide that. And we can take the section off again. And finally, uh, we've just got this feature to put on. Um, so it's probably, it's not the same geometry as, as that one. This one's much bigger, as you can see. Um, we've got a fairly kind of big drop off a fairly big draft rather on that area so there's no section that really works for me nicely on that uh, I think I might just eye this up and see what it looks like when I've modeled it sort of manually longhand if you like without taking a section so again we 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 can get some of it for free in terms of location by just using that geometry um, we'll pick off that line as a um, convert entity, I'll draw from there down to here. That is automatically tangent. Um, that is a line I can reuse, so I can just grab that and t convert it to construction line mirrored across, and then we'll put the geometry in for this one. Now I didn't, I wasn't thinking ahead on this one, so I haven't got my surface to extrude up to, so I might have to just go in and retrospectively apply that before this feature, but that can be done. It's sort of easier to do it before than it is afterwards. Um, we haven't got any draft on, there's any draft on that edge there, but there must be in reality. So I think it's just because the way it sort of dives in, it doesn't actually need it. It's drafted that way rather than this way. Well, that, that will become apparent, I think, when I cut it back. So I can probably make these parallel to this. And I can hide this. This is just getting in the way now. Oops, hide, hide that one. And mirror that across. Now, in this case, this one can can uh, go beyond this feature because uh, it will automatically get truncated as a part of the extrusion process. Because I'm going to put this surface in first, and obviously it doesn't protrude through that one, so we'll be fine with that. Um, right, let's go around and trim everything off. So we'll. Trim, 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 trim. Okay, now I should really dimension this as well because I want to just make sure it doesn't move around. And I want to correct things that need correcting, so that probably should, because only, I've only eyed this up, so probably will make that one degree because the other one was one degree. Let's make that symmetrical. Um, let's put a dimension across here like that, let's make that six millimeters. Um, we can put a fillet on these two areas afterwards to, to get that feature there. That's good for that. I'm now going to just roll back and um, again we'll, we'll reuse that right hand plane because I don't need to put one down the center, it's just an unnecessary feature. Uh, so we'll draw on the right hand plane actually no we'll cut our section first of all and we'll move the section to over here and yeah we've got again this sort of split arrangement of draft so We'll just drop a line on there, 
and fit it in position. I've, I've got my F hotkey for um, fitting, which is why I'm not using the button. Let's fit that as well. The, this area of mesh is probably influencing that fit a little bit, so I'm just going to drag that up manually and just stick it on there. We can intersect the two now. And then do the final bit of dimensioning. Of angle and distance. There we go. And extrude that surface across and now I can use the sketch that I created before to extrude up to and there we go so that's that and I can hide that take off my section um, obviously this this face is a little bit um, further forward than it is on the casting we sort of decided, or I decided that was because of the the casting hasn't moved as much as it should have done, and the and the draft should have been squared up between these two faces, or between this face and that one. Right. Well, I think I'm going to leave that casting there because the last bit is just popping these holes through, which we've already extracted, and then we know where those are, and then we're just applying a a chamfer for that. So uh, I hope you found that useful. Thank you for watching, and. Um, There'll be some more videos uh, shortly.